All right, so Guinea-Bissau, a country many people don't even heard of. A very small nation, deep in Africa. That's the country I would like to talk about today, uh, because last week uh, a friend of mine uh, contacted me. I'm still keeping in touch with my African friends, especially they're reaching out since they don't have many European friends. And he told me that uh, uh, his father passed away. In fact, uh, my friend from Senegal who introduced me the friend in Guinea Bissau told me that his father passed away. Um, but he deleted his Facebook account, so I couldn't contact him. Um, Anyway, he should also have a couchsurfing account because I helped him to become a couchsurfing host since there are barely people knowing couchsurfing down there in Guinea-Bissau and I was his first guest. Unfortunately, he had a bad experience um, because uh, the people are very, very poor. Um, it's one of the poorest nations um, in Africa. The life expectancy in Guinea-Bissau is only 57 years old. That's the least I've ever heard of in the country I've visited. There are probably poorer nations deep in Africa, but this is probably the poorest country I've ever visited. The first day I've been to Guinea-Bissau, I had couch surfing. A very nice guys, environmentalists, and he took good care of me, but the house was very run down. Very old, but it's like the locals live, which, which is okay to have this experience. Um, but I was still grateful that uh, he hosted me. Um, they haven't had running water, for example. The sisters have to go to uh, how is it, dwell and get the uh, buckets with water so we could take a shower. So the pigs are bathing here and this is just the gym next to the pigs. It was um, it were extreme conditions and the bad experience was not about the living conditions, it was about that um, one of his brothers, I assume. Their brothers or somebody, they stole money from me again. Again, like this is uh, the second time. Here it happened the first time, but it also happened in Gambia. Um, stole money from my uh, pocket. Yes, uh, I left, I took all the valuables mostly with me. Um, but I left, for example, Euro emergency currency, 40 Euro in my um, bag and um, yeah, it was gone after I got back from a trip and it must be one of his brother because he shares the room with two of his brothers only yeah? and usually they lock the room, so it must be one of them. Although I didn't want to disturb them, so I didn't mention it to him. Anyway, Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau is on the west coast of Africa. Uh, using the West African Fra, which is the same currency um, I think other, other nations as well use it, for example Senegal um, and I don't know the other nations there, like uh, Burkina Faso, I've read um, and yeah, so it's easy, you don't have to change the currency when you come from Senegal in fact, I came from Senegal um, overland, because I was in Ziginshu it wasn't too far, so I thought I'd just visit the capital, especially because my friend from Gambia introduced me to his friend in uh, Guinea-Bissau. He is an uh, environmentalist, he's a radio moderator, so he even been to Europe on a trip uh, sponsored um, for some charity. I don't know exactly. Um, so it was very interesting. I accompanied him to the radio um, where he gave speeches and um, also yeah, to see local life. First of all, people there speak Portuguese because it was, it used to be a Portuguese uh, colony. Um, and it's like, it's just, I think it became independent in 1974. So less than 50 years. Yeah? So in fact, the country is less than 50 years independent. Um, and yeah, what to do in Guinea-Bissau? That's a good question. Because there are not too many tourists. So, for, besides visiting the local culture, seeing the language and trying some local food, I um, asked my friend what he can do, what I can do. And he said, yeah, deep in the jungle, there he knows somebody who is taking care of, uh, he's also an environmentalist. So I could uh, visit his friend. He couldn't speak English, uh, unfortunately. Um, so I took the bus to the uh, it's another city called Buba. 
Um, I just looked it up before again because I forgot it. Uh, and there I got hosted by the, the camp, by the um, facilities of the uh, envi environmentalist camp. So I spent there two nights, uh, also harsh conditions, but um, it's an experience. Yeah, it was beautiful though yeah, to see and I think the people there, they never see a white guy. Yeah? Like, or well, rarely see a white guy. So it's nice that people are just curious, they're making friends, they're very friendly. Um, it was interesting, you know, I enjoyed the fame <laughs> being down there deep in the jungle. Yeah, so I um, accompanied uh, the friend, uh, the, the environmentalist worker to see what he's doing and they having had uh, a chimpanzee in the cage. He likes to drink water. But I don't want to give him my bottle, you know. I want to drink it later on. No, no, you come, you come here. He wants the bottle. No, 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 you come here down. You come down here, and I put it in your mouth. Come here. Yeah, that's how you drink it. Yeah, that was one of the most highlights. Although I felt heartbroken because this tiny cage. Uh, uh, accompanying the chimpanzee and uh, it's interesting to get so close to the chimpanzee. Chimpanzees can be dangerous but only if you provoke them. So I asked them uh, if they could let the chimpanzee out so I could uh, yeah, get a close encounter with the chimpanzee uh, uh, but I said no, he would run away. I said okay, instead can you let me in? I said okay. So they let me in this tiny cage and I uh, had a wonderful, unforgettable interaction with this little chimpanzee. Probably the highlight of my entire trip. So, we're here in the cage. <laughs> you like to play? <laughs> huh? Hey, Boo. Uh, I spent a few minutes, maybe ten, uh, and it was, it was such a friendly chimpanzee. I love this guy. Um, yeah. But besides that, there's not too much to do. You can pay expensive tours to the, uh, see the uh, environment, see the animals, especially birds. Yeah, there are not many, there are not lions or anything. Chimpanzees, they, should, they have chimpanzees there, but I haven't seen any wild chimpanzee. But I thought, I want to explore the wildlife. And it's very difficult because of the transport. So, um, the environmentalist friend said, yeah, you can rent me a motorbike. It would also be nice if you could rent like a motorbike and you could at least get around this town. But so far it seems really nice here. Yeah, so it was like a cross bike, very old one. Uh, I paid him like $10 for a day, uh, plus the, the gas I had to fill up. And so I took a tour into the National Park. So now we're here in the water bus in the National Park. It was very interesting to see um, people, they're getting the um, cashew trees, so you have cashew fruits on the way. So here we are at the cashew fields, yeah, as you can see here, delicious cashews, yeah, and because now is the season, so now the time is perfect, right, to correct them. Yeah. And you can really explore the, uh, yeah, the little villages inside. Although they're wearing more like Western clothes, they have a very strange, um, yeah, setting. Yeah, they're not really um, they're excluded, but they're still kind of civilized. Uh, every shop has like a kiosk, a kiosk, yeah, like maybe tiny restaurants and little huts, uh, church stuff like this. Yeah, so the most, the highlight was like that I could just take the, the, the motorbike and just ride the, the dirt roads into the jungle. It was really fun because the